Well, some recent high-profile events in Europe indicate, and some have said this, that Islam in some of its forms could be hazardous to people's health. But in Australia, it is Muslims who are declaring they're the ones who need safe spaces. A group called the Islamic Council of Victoria, which says it represents 200,000 Muslims in Australia, is calling on the government there to fund a series of safe spaces where they say Muslims can safely express, this is a quote, inflammatory views that would cause trouble if voiced publicly. This is part of the de-radicalization process. Blair Amani is the executive director of Equality for Her. She's an American Muslim. She said safe spaces would be a good idea here. Blair Amani joins us tonight. So, Blair, what exactly would a safe space for Muslims look like? What does that mean exactly? Well, first, I think we need to start by understanding that everybody kind of misunderstands what a safe space means. And so for me today, I'm talking about safe spaces being somewhere where you can be who you are without fear of being surveilled, having violence committed against you, or being harassed. And I think it's a good idea to have everywhere. America was built on the idea that we could express our religious freedoms, that we can have free speech. I know that's something that you very much believe in. Yes. And I think it's you know a necessary thing and we're talking about safe spaces for Muslims we need to recognize that we've been surveilled for a very long time I converted to Islam two years ago but for folks who have been Muslim in living in America it's a crisis for them because you know you're being surveilled you're being watched and children are being affected if so you're we may have stop you there why do you think law enforcement agencies would put Muslims under surveillance well, obviously, because of the you know the counterterrorism efforts, but when no, but what is I'm sorry, what is that? Why would there be counterterrorism efforts aimed at Muslims? Come on, Tucker, you're a smart guy. You know why that is. I don't know. I'm I'm a man who asks questions, and and I'm asking a question about the statement you just made. What's the answer? Absolutely. Well, there are you know acts of terror committed in the name of Allah that do not you know reflect the Muslim community. However, there is this. Well, they know, may or they may not, but but you'll you'll concede this is not entirely random. It's not that the U.S. government or police departments are just like looking for some religious group to persecute, or, or is that what you're saying? I am saying that, you know, the, the United then States government has to, been in the business of doing that for quite really? a long time. So why don't they right do now, it to the Muslims, Amish? It, Wait, hold on a second. Why don't they do it to the Amish? Or why don't they do it to Hasidic Jews? I mean, they're a set-apart community, speak a different language, not assimilated. But I don't see a lot, of, a lot of terror attacks committed by those groups. Have you? It's not profitable right now to be, you know, speaking against these other groups. Right now, it's very profitable to be speaking against Muslims because it's, you know, feeding into this wartime effort. More okay. cells. Okay, but look, I mean, we can debate the details here, but it's, I think it's important to acknowledge a baseline, and that is that there have been an awful lot of attacks where actual people died in the United States and in Europe committed by people saying really clearly we're acting in the name of Islam. And other Muslims say, you don't act in my name and you're perverting our religion or whatever. But there's still people who have killed a lot of other people in the name of Islam. So it's not like some mass fantasy that law enforcement is acting out of, this is a real thing. And I don't understand why groups like yours won't acknowledge the reality of that, because it, it is there. It's true. I don't understand why other groups won't acknowledge that violence isn't something that's exclusive to the Muslim community. No one's it's not that. exclusive to Islam. It's not exclusive to, you know, my religion. And so which is Islam, but we see people being targeted in a way that's extremely unfair. And we also have this rise of white supremacist and, you know, quote, alt-right, you know, violence that's being committed. Don't spare me. That's it's, too dumb. I mean, happening. I'm, 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 no, you know, we but can't actually, ignore it's that not, it's I mean, happening, Tucker. Look, if you're reading only Salon all day, maybe you've been convinced of that. But the truth is there are hard numbers kept by the U.S. government, maybe they're in on this plot too, that show exactly the number of people who died and how in terror attacks in the United States. And the truth is, there's no comparison. There actually is a problem with people self-identifying as Muslims murdering other people in the name of Islam. I don't think you're implicated in that. I'm not saying you are. But I just don't know why you're not more upset at them. I'm an Episcopalian. If there are Episcopalians setting off bombs in the I'm name not upset, of... Tucker. Okay, but what you're doing is coming on and lecturing the U.S. government for being racist and mean to Muslims. Why don't you say, well, there's a real problem in our community. We're trying to do something about it, but maybe they should stop like surveilling us so much. That would be a fair... A fair thing to say, but instead it's like it's always the fault of the larger society. And that just, you know what, that's just silly. Fair. You see what I mean? Well, fair? I think, you know, it's, it's ridiculous that the, the idea that we can't have those safe spaces, like we were saying, is, is something that's out of the question. The, the truth is that, you know, Muslims are being targeted in ways, and, and truly, there are other communities that need, that, other communities that need safe spaces, which so, includes so the LGBTQ community, okay, the black so we, community. Okay. There needs to be spaces where people I, are I'm free not sure you're from not being to speak on their behalf, too. Uh, but I, I feel like I'm harassed a lot online, whatever. I mean, I guess we're all victims here, but here's the, here's the question. What would Muslims say in safe spaces that they wouldn't say in public, do you think? 
Well, I don't speak for all Muslims, and I actually am a, a black queer m woman in, in addition to being a Muslim. Um, but so from my own experience, you know, when I go to the airport and I go to untangle, you know, a pair of headphones and I get, you know, visited by somebody from TSA, it's that type of thing. We have to look at the fact that it's not necessarily so inflammatory things. you untangle it's headphones in the safe space? No, no, this is a sincere question, though. You're asking for someone, uh, not you, I guess, to pay for a safe space where people can say whatever they want. And I want examples of the kind of things that Muslims believe they could only say in a so-called safe space and could not say, for example, on this show or on a street corner. Like, what kind kinds of things would they be saying in these spaces? I don't think it's necessarily something that they can't say elsewhere, but it's, you know, spaces have internal, internal community dialogues to be able to hash things out, to be able to have these complicated discussions. And something else that, you know, I really want to be out in the forefront that the Islamic Council of Victoria has also done in collaboration with the Board of Imams is speaking out against violence against women. These type of, you know, internal community dialogues acknowledging that there's an right. issue of violence against women and that, you know, there needs to be more in the Muslim community, there's a problem. In all communities, women. there is an okay. issue of violence against have women. You noticed that, have you noticed that all identity politics kind of converges in the end? So it's not just about Muslims, it's about the LBGT community, it's about black It's like, you know, at some point... Well, some of us, like myself, exist in all of those communities. It's not identity politics when it's your life. But do you also... It's, you know, okay. But don't you also think that primarily you're an American? Aren't we all first and foremost Americans? I'm black first. End of conversation. Thanks, Blair.